fun 1.0 dropped like two weeks ago but it's everywhere you can look it up on youtube or reddit it's everywhere but it's not really fair to compare it with node.js after all it's like a, an upgrade of node right so let's do a race which includes every major framework and bun and just to top it all off we'll also put rust because it may not be that popular but it is the best So I created an Ubuntu VM with two cores and four gigabytes of RAM. And that's because of three reasons. First, Linux is the most widely used operating system on the servers. Second, uh, the resources we buy on the cloud are not as powerful as a thousand dollar PC. And third, I didn't want to install all these things into my computer. So I just created a VM. So I have created eight APIs in different frameworks and runtimes. All of these API have same endpoints and I have tried to keep them as minimal as possible except for uh, Axum. Uh, I have a little few more things there but all of the others are as minimal as possible. So we have six endpoints. First one being slash API which just returns the name of the framework or the runtime. Then we have login to log in and then we have register same and then we have update user so this update user will update all the users in database not just a single user then the last two are blogs and blog blogs will return a hundred blogs and thus blog one will return a single blog so these are the six endpoints that we will be testing for in addition to the functionality that they perform there is also a loop uh, from zero till a hundred thousand uh, except for slash api endpoint uh, in that doesn't have anything else other than returning the string but all the other uh, endpoints have a loop zero till hundred thousand on also they carry out three select requests from the user so i will be using auto cannon and postman for testing auto cannon will simulate a more uh, stress like situation and postman a more realistic usage Okay, so now everything out of our way, we can start our projects and fire up our Postman and Auto Cannon. So everyone performed quite well in Postman test. Rust was the best, obviously, but uh, the second best was Spring Boot. It was really, really close between uh, Spring Boot and Axum. There was about 2 millisecond difference, Axum was about 3.5 milliseconds and Spring Boot was about 4.3 or 4.4 milliseconds. But I've rounded out the averages, only shows uh, 1 millisecond difference but it was about 2 millisecond difference between Axum and Rust for average milliseconds. Burn also performed really well. It was slightly worse than Spring Boot but overall it was still really good. Next, Node did decent, Flask also did decent. So for .NET, it was quite strange because I think it was having some memory issue in this one. So it wasn't performing really well. Uh, it will perform fine in the beginning and then the memory usage will just skyrocket and the app will stop giving proper responses for a few requests. Then it will go down and work properly again. I'm not sure what was the problem. Uh, I am a .NET developer, so I should be able to fix it in the future. But as of now, this these are the results. But if we add Laravel and Rails to this graph, we can clearly see that Laravel and Rails were uh, a bit too behind the others. But overall, 26 milliseconds is still not that bad if we consider real world usage. So unlike Postman, in AutoCanon, I have a lot of graphs and a lot of interesting results. So first one is number of requests. So it is not the best measure, but it is one of the metric. Okay, so clearly Axum at the top, no doubt about it. Second, we have Spring Boot, then we have .NET and Flask. We will see that if we look at more statistics, Spring Boot might be a little lower and same with Flask, they might be a little lower than they seem here. And Rails was far behind. And for Laravel, well, it didn't work at all. 
I wasn't able to get any data for Laravel so I have skipped that one out from this test. Next up we have data rate in megabytes. So clearly axum at the top because uh, the number of requests was higher. .NET is slightly higher than Spring Boot. I think this is probably because the request I returned for blocks in .NET contained a little more data that's why the amount of data was higher even though the request was slightly lower but overall I'll say the Spring Boot and .NET were neck to neck there was not much difference in uh, number of requests and data rate otherwise there were some differences which we'll take a look later and now we can see the flask dropping down this is because even though the flask made uh, a lot more requests a lot of them ended up in error that was not because the code was faulty but because sometime it was taking so long to respond that the next few requests were straight up thrown into errors uh, and then at the bottom we have rails let's see the latency so this is the minimum response time so we can see that axum is at about 25 milliseconds burn slightly higher at about 80 milliseconds and node is around 120 not exactly around 120 but around 110 or 105 uh, .NET pretty well at around 40 milliseconds rails okay so rails is the pretty strange because sometimes it the response time will go crazy high and sometimes it will be really quick okay next up we have spring boot again spring boot also performed a bit strange because some requests were super fast and the other ones was uh, let's say a little bit slower and finally we don't have flask in this one because the flask just breaks everything it was so slow compared to everything else uh, that yeah I didn't include that in fast graph because it won't give the proper scale to the others if we had average response time as well again axum at the top then we have uh, .NET bun and node bun did surprisingly well okay so the only difference between bun and node is that the runtime is different all the other things in the code are exactly the same so the difference we see between bun and node is without any native bun things so you can clearly see even though rails looks bad it was still far better than anything flask has done now finally the maximum response time so with the maximum response time .NET gets a little bit crushed by bun and node because the maximum response time was really bad for uh, .NET especially compared to its previous performances uh, axum still the best but let's take a look at 50% 90% and 2.5% responses because even though the average response time might be higher but that doesn't mean that half of the request was taking uh, the same time as average response time in 50% graph we can clearly see axon at the top rails second dot net bun and node so dot net did really good in 50% as well bun and node uh, all about 20 30% difference which was expected but spring boot fails in this 50% it did really good in minimum response time but as soon as we take a look at 50% response time which means uh, 50% of requests took about 300 milliseconds so this is not good with 2.5% included we have about the same things which we expected and finally we have our 99% responses so the trends remains the same I have not included rails maximum response time but it was really really high over 1500 milliseconds so it was just too bad So that's all for this video thanks for watching and this video took a lot of time so please consider sharing uh, i want to reach 500 views in this one i know it's a bit too much i have not reached even 200 views but yeah this one took a lot of time so please do share